happy? Amen. It's so good to be here uh, this morning. And I say that all the time, but that's because it is good to be here all the time. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. God is just so good and he's so faithful, so wonderful, isn't he? Amen. It's just uh, it's just a blessing. Is the day the first? It is the first day of May. All right, people. Time is moving on. Time is moving on. Uh, just a few days ago, I was saying it's the first day of April. And so time moves quicker. I, I don't know, Shay, Tasha. Uh, maybe you can attest to this, I can, that the older you get, the quicker time goes. Amen. Okay, well, keep living. <laughs> he says, not yet. Okay, it'll happen. <laughs> the time they just starts zip, zipping by, zipping by. Oh, I have a birthday coming up in a few days. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So... <laughs> <laughs> Amen. We're in the book of Exodus, not Exodus, we're in the uh, Exodus stage, and we're in the book of Numbers. So turn with me, please, to the book of Numbers. I'm, I'm taking my time. We're still in chapter 11, taking my time with that because that's kind of a little transition. And it is of sorts because for the first 10 chapters of this book, Remember how obedient and willing they were? They were just ready to go right along with whatever Moses was saying because they were experiencing the joy of being free. And if you don't know it, there is joy in being free. You don't know that unless you've been bound. And I can just testify for myself this morning that I've been bound by many things, not just one thing. I've been bound by many things. But the old saint said, the Lord saved me. Why should I be bound? Why should I be bound? And so I thank God that he has the ability to free us this morning. I thank God that there's liberty in serving the Lord. You know, a lot of times when people are uh, witnessing or when people are on the outside looking in, they think that believers have such a restricted life. And they look at the things you cannot do and the things you shouldn't do and those things like that. But um, when the Lord when the Lord truly revealed himself to me as a God of grace, it became apparent that I had just started living. And it became apparent of just how free I really was because my conception of him had been all tied up into rules and regulations. And my conception had been tied up into, well, if you do that, you're going to hell. And, and, and when, when, when he revealed himself to me as a God of grace, then I was like, oh, my God, this is just liberating. It's so awesome. And so I thank God for freedom. I thank God for liberty this morning. And I thank God for uh, allowing uh, me to experience some of that. I thank God for that. So in Numbers chapter 11, they, they take a turn. And they started lusting after things that they had when they were in Egypt. Now, there was a mixed multitude with them. And Jean so eloquently let us know that the mixed multitude, they didn't all come out. It was not all Jews that came out of Egypt. And a lot of times when, um, you know, when you have mixed company, as I said Sunday, the mixed company sometimes will draw you instead of you drawing them. And that's kind of what happened in this instance. So they were going along fine. Everything was going fine until their mind went back to Egypt. And they began to lament about the things that they had in Egypt, all of the good food that they had and everything uh, that was going on over there. And so when they started complaining, um, when they started complaining, Moses started complaining. 
<laughs> He's not exempt. So, so, so then when you're a leader, it doesn't exempt you from complaining. People get on your nerves too. That's what amazes me about people. They think that you get on their nerves and never think that they get on your nerves. <laughs> what is that about? But it works both ways, doesn't it? Yeah. Doesn't matter because you're the leader. You know, a lot of people say because you're the leader. Well, you're the leader, and they, they all not to get on your nerves. But you're human. But you're human, just like everybody else. And so Moses began to uh, uh, just lament and talk about how uh, everything was happening. And in, um, in chapter... Um, 10, as I said, we were closing, and I said earlier now, he was like, you know, really thanking God in chapter 10, verse 35 and 36. Let's go back over there. Chapter 10, verse 35 and 36, he says, And it came to pass when the ark set forth that Moses said, Rise up, Lord, and let thine enemies be scattered, and let them that hate thee flee before thee. And when it rested, he said, Return, O Lord, unto the many thousands of Israel. But now, over in uh, Numbers 11, uh, verses 10, it starts off, Then Moses heard the people weep throughout their families, every man in the door of his tent, and the anger of the Lord was kindled greatly. Moses also was displeased. And Moses said unto the Lord, Wherefore have thou afflicted thy servant, and wherefore have I not found favor in thy sight, that thou layest the burden of all this people upon me? Have I conceived all this people? Have I begotten them that thou should have said unto me, Carry them in thy bosom as a nursing father, beareth the sucking child unto the land which thou sweareth unto their fathers? When should I have flesh to give unto all the people? For they weep unto me, saying, Give us flesh that we may eat. Because, of course, as I said earlier, their mind had gone back to the flesh pots uh, when they were over in Egypt. The mixed multitude stirred up the wrath there, stirred it up, and, and took their mind all the way back. And, and, and your mind, your mind is a funny kind of thing. Your mind is a funny kind of thing. Sometimes all it takes is a smell for you to be transported somewhere. You ever been that, done that? Sometimes if you just smell a smell, it takes you back sometimes it's years back, and you remember right where you were and what you were doing. Sometimes it's a song, and sometimes it's a place. All you got to do is go to that place, or all you got to do is hear that song, and it transports you back to where you were. And so they were getting manna every day, manna every day, but then uh, all of a sudden they were transported back into Egypt where they were eating meat. And so uh, they, they began to, to criticize, and they got on Moses' nerves. Uh, in verse 16, then God helps him. Now, I want to say this, that as we talked about leaders earlier just being human. They don't have just a big letter on their chest, not a big L, super leader. You know, we're just human. So then, there, there, there's some things, and we need to consider this when we are leaders. And, and any time that we've been in positions of leadership, I know that we, we, we have experienced this. But there are a few things that discourage God's servants, God's servants, more than people criticizing them unjustly. No one likes to be criticized unjustly. No one likes to be critical. It doesn't feel good. It doesn't feel good. Uh, and then to complain on top of that about the blessings that the Lord has given. Now, if, if something is a blessing, how can you complain about a blessing? There's something wrong with that picture, isn't it? So um, when, when we look at the children of Israel, when we look at how ungrateful they were, when we look at how hard-hearted they were, when we look at how hard-headed they were, uh, it's a wonder Moses didn't complain more than he did. It's a wonder he just didn't go through that with a switch, just, just, just whooping everybody up out of there. Because, you know, people have a way of taking you there. You know, they just have a way of taking you there on the brink sometimes. 
I've, you just have to sometimes shut down, walk away, or do whatever to keep from it being a total disaster. Okay, so this is the first of two occasions when the attitude of the people caused Moses, Moses to sin. Let's go over to um, look at uh, Numbers 20 and see over there. Let's just go a little ahead of ourselves. Number t Numbers 20, and let's look at verses 1 through uh, 13. Well, I'm not going to read all of that because that's quite a few verses, but I will say this is when they were, you know, needing water, and the water came from the rock, and there was no water. I'm in verse 2 for the congregation, and they gathered themselves together against Moses and against Aaron. And the people showed with Moses and spake, saying, Would God that we had died when our brethren died before the Lord? And why have ye brought up the congregation of the Lord into this wilderness that we and our cattle should die there? And it's funny how they always go back and they can always find fault in something and not ever see the part that they played in anything. Do you know people like that? Have you ever been like that? They say I'm like that a lot of times. You don't want to take responsibility for your own actions. That's... You know what? And it, it <laughs> well, you know, let me say, that's a hard pill to swallow. But it's the truth that when you own up to it, it can really help you. So, um, really, when I'm counseling or ministering to people, a lot of times, that's really where I start. Where I start. Well, have you ever considered the part that you played in it? And they'll keep talking, talking, talking. Oh, stop. Have you ever considered the part that you played in it? <laughs> and when you do that, it gives you a whole, it just gives you a different perspective. And it also keeps you from being so quick to jump uh, to conclusions or to make conclusions about certain situations. But they always want to throw Moses under the bus. Or, or, or as, as the young people say, they always want to throw shade. Poor Moses, you know, he just kind of really didn't have a chance with the attitude that they have. It says, and therefore, in verse 5, have ye made us to come up out of Egypt to bring us into this evil place? It is no place of seed or of figs or of vines or of pomegranates, neither is there any water to drink. And so the Lord tells Moses what to do, and in verse 8 it says, Take the rod and gather thou the assembly together, thou and Aaron thy brother, and speak ye unto the rock before their eyes, and it shall give forth his water his water and thou shalt bring forth to them water out of the rock so that thou shalt give the congregation and their beasts drink and Moses took the rod from before the Lord as he commanded him and Moses and Aaron gathered the congregation together before the rock and he said unto them hear now ye rebels must we fetch you water out of this rock and Moses lifted up his hand and with his rod he smote the rock twice and the water came out abundantly and the congregation drank and their beast also but the God was still faithful God still gave them water even though Moses was disobedient see he had allowed them to arouse his emotions and that's why it's not good to live out of your emotions because many times if something happens and you're working out of your emotions, you'll make a decision that you will regret. If you make an, uh, an emotional decision uh, without taking time to either seek counsel, taking time to seek the Lord, or taking time to just reflect upon what you're getting ready to do. I had a call the other day about uh, some, uh, uh, a decision someone had made. I don't know what the, why, what the call was to me for, because I could tell when uh, we were talking that the person had already made up their mind about what they were going to do. And I'm thinking, well, you know, I can't speak about that for you. You have to make your own decision about that. You have to count up the cost. Uh, count up the cost to see if you can do that. So when you make an emotional decision, sometimes, you know, um, it, it can end up being disastrous. 
uh, here as, as, as proof, uh, proof to the point because he end up, ended up not being able to go into the land that was promised. So let's go back over to Numbers 11. So Moses lost his perspective and got his eyes off the Lord and on himself. Now, when you're leading, and that's something easy to do because of leadership, leadership. Now, there's a, something called servant leadership or servant leader. And as a servant leader, you know, really, you're, you're there to serve. You're in a leadership position. Let's, let's say like a pastor. That's a servant leadership position. You're in the position to serve. You have to lead with a certain amount of dignity, a certain amount of integrity, but still humble enough to lead, humble enough to take directions, humble enough to know that you don't really still know everything, but you're still serving. Okay? So um, Moses got his perspective all mixed up, all mixed up. I want to say to you, uh, as, as, as us being here in this assembly, that sometimes leadership is a thankless job. You know, even in your home, a lot of times, Stephanie, they don't thank us because they think that's what we're supposed to do. Amen. But let me say this, <laughs> and this is my stuff. I said this the other night, and I will say it to you. I do think it is, a, it is a sign of stupidity when someone does anything for you and you fail to show gratitude. It's a sign of stupidity. No matter how big it is or no matter how small it is. And so even if it's something that the person is supposed to do, or something you think they should be doing. A thank you is always in order. A thank you is always in order. So let us remember that. And let us not have to, uh, a lot of times the poor leader be grabbing for trying to get some compliments or trying to get, you know what I'm saying? They want somebody to give them a pat on the back and just waiting on somebody to say, you're doing a good job. And they, people just keep going. Oh, walk by, just keep on going. But everybody want to thank you. Everybody want to be encouraged sometimes. Sometimes around my house, Lord have mercy. Vivian, I just get trifling. I just walk by the stuff. I see it, but I'm waiting on somebody to see I'm just walking. I just keep walking by the stuff. And y'all don't see it. I don't see it either. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. But I just feel like as people of God, as people of God, we shouldn't be the ones to, to uh, not be the encourager. We should be so easy to encourage someone else. We should be so easy to, to be the one to give the pat on the back. I agree with you wholeheartedly. <laughs> I, feel like, I feel a butt coming. I feel a butt coming. I, I want to give another perspective on it. And, 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 and it is one of reality. And the, one, the thing is, first thing you, you were talking about, um, what is my part in it? See, so hit that just briefly. Okay. What I found that it, that takes you whenever you can see what your part of a conflict is, then it takes you from the position of a victim to the possibility of being a victor. Mm -hmm. Because if I'm always subject to you and your whims and what you decide to do to me and how you treated me, then I'm just a victim. But when I can own up to my part which is, it may just be as simple as just coming around you. Maybe what I need to do is just don't come around you, and then I won't be treated like that. That's my part in it, whatever. I got some part in it. I, I do. Uh, and, and the other thing is, is that I agree with you wholeheartedly that everybody wants to be appreciated. Uh, one thing came to me this morning is, it's the folks who have the most miserable life is the one that's on Facebook talking about how happy they are. People that's really happy don't have a need to put on, put on Facebook how happy they are. 
<laughs> they just don't. So um, this is a difficult walk, a walk of spirituality. Uh, it's kind of like uh, Charles, this guy told me when I was telling him, so y'all get to go home, I got to stay up all night and read these big books, these law books and all this and everything. And he told me this, and I never forgot it, Lady Deborah. He told me, he said, well, Vandal, if it was easy, everybody would do it. So then a walk of spirituality, it has great. And then Paul says that, that I'm, I'm, I'm persuaded that the stuff we're going through is not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed. But a walk of spirituality is hard. And basically, Jackie, I have to go against the grain, and I have to quit looking to man for my satisfaction or my fulfillment and look to the Lord. Because you can get all kind of compliments and pats on the back from man, and it still ain't enough. It's still not enough. That's true. But just one word from the Lord, that's all. True, true, true. You think something get ready to happen? Oh, is it, it's a storm coming through. But um, there's a book, and I can't think of the na name of the book at the moment. But uh, people are are made up differently, and so sometimes it it takes different things for different people. Uh, when you're showing appreciation, I think it's the seven seven something of appreciation. I can't remember. I have the book and can't even remember the num name of it. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Exactly. It's, it's just so easily to start taking stuff for granted. Start taking people well, for granted. Well, well, you set yourself up when you start thinking about what you're doing. Yeah. You know, as I sit in this church, I don't see anything I've done. But I see so much that all of you have done. From all of this, I'm looking at how beautiful this is. Somebody else did that. I didn't do that. And when you get all wrapped up in yourself and you're thinking about, I do this and I do that, and don't nobody appreciate you just that's Satan setting you up. Yeah. Who are you? Yeah. If God didn't, Paul said it this way. He said, no man has anything except what God gave him. If God yeah. hadn't given you that, you just got off in yourself. That's how come you're messed up. It ain't the people, it's you. True. I, I agree with that. I agree with that. Amen. Anyone else? Anyone else? It only takes one person to start and it's free. It does. know that they shouldn't be doing that and that you ought to be grateful for whatever it is that people are doing for you or whatever situation you're in mm -hmm. and God will bring you let them know you know God will bring you through this because mm -hmm. I hate a complaint I do and it makes my head hurt to hear somebody Every time I see them, they are complaining. You are a lie. I agree. You, you, I agree. you know, mm -hmm. some people don't like Kip and whatever, but hell in the West Hell in the School just complain themselves into the position they're in. And Kip talked themselves up. They talked themselves up. Everything was positive about. So. It's just, uh... Okay. Anybody else? Anybody else? Thank y'all for that. Okay, so in verse... Oh, I know what... what uh -huh. When I first started practicing law, I went to work for, uh, for uh, legal services. 
Okay, I didn't have any problem with that. I just wanted to help people. You know, it wasn't making any money. I think fifteen thousand dollars a year. But 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 I was happy because people coming in get to help people. It wasn't the people that I was helping. It was the staff. I promise you. I promise you. And, and you know, I'm you know getting up, putting on my little suits. I wasn't able to wear suits like I would have had a little hundred dollars, three four hundred dollars from horns. Three, four hundred dollar suits I own and everything, and I'm, you know, trying to be a little lawyer and everything. And they, you know, whispering and who he think he is. They didn't want to dress. And I always have been taught, Brother Alex, you don't dress for the job you got now. You dress for the job you're trying to go to. And if you're around people who just stared at they complaining and and whatever, then the boss won't come to them. He always come to you for everything because if, whenever he come to them, they got a negative attitude. So it working you to death. Come back. Come back. <laughs> come back. Hey, I worked for him for 10 months and I was gone. <laughs> I was gone. I said, no, I don't want to be around. If you're around down folk all the time, you can't help but be down. True. I agree. I agree. <laughs> In, in, in uh, Numbers 11, verse 16, and the Lord said unto Moses, gather unto me 70 men of the elders of Israel. This is what I like about God. God always has a solution. He's always standing ready to help you, no matter what it is. He's always standing ready to help you, but you have to be willing and, and you know, you have to hear to help. You got to, you got to hear it because now a lot of times he's sending it and we're thinking it's something else. Uh, and so um, he is a good God. He says, gather unto me 70 men of the elders of Israel, whom thou knoweth to be the elders of the people and officers over them and bring them unto the tabernacle of the congregation that they may stand there with thee. And I will come down and talk with thee there, and I will take of the spirit which is upon them, and will put it upon them. And they shall bear the burden of the people with thee, that thou bear it not thyself alone. Isn't that just like God? And I tell you, uh, he, he said in one place, my yoke is easy, and my burdens are light. And light, and light in the respect, again, as I said Sunday, that you don't have to bear it alone. You don't have to bear it alone. And so he says, and say thou unto the people, sanctify yourselves against tomorrow and ye shall eat and ye shall eat flesh. That's what you've been wanting. Then that's what I'm going to give you. I'm going to give it to you so, so much so until you are going to get tired of it. You complaining about it. I'm going to give you just what you want. And sometimes it is something to get just what you ask for. You really have to be careful a lot of times. You think you want something, but are you really woman and man enough to get what you've been asking for? Oh, my goodness. Sometimes it comes in like a, a tornado. Comes in like a tornado, and you're like, Lord Jesus, I didn't know. I didn't know. I didn't know. I didn't know. Uh, it says, um, Sanctify yourselves against tomorrow, and ye shall eat flesh. For ye have wept in the ears of the Lord, saying, Who shall give us flesh to eat? For it was well with us in Egypt. Therefore, the Lord will give you flesh, and ye shall eat. See, the Lord trying to let you see. Now, you taking, you trying to go all the way back. I brought you out of a, of a bad situation. You might not have known how bad it was. But I brought you out of a bad situation. And now when you get off just a little bit, just a little ways away from Egypt, you want to turn around and go back to what you had. Well, I'm offering you freedom on this hand, and I'm offering you a land that flows with milk and honey, but you looking back to a land that was controlled by someone else where you didn't, you didn't have nothing over there. It was the, the Egyptians. But I'm taking you somewhere that I'm giving you houses that you didn't build. I'm going to give you vineyards that you don't even have to plant. When, I get when you get over there, it's going to be waiting for you. It's going to be waiting for you. All you got to do is believe enough to just walk on in and claim what I've already given you. But now you so uh, stuck on what was. So stuck on what was. And y'all, we cannot live like that 
we can't live. We can't afford to live like that. No, a lot of times, and, and you know, I, I say it is good to go back into your mind, uh, you know, to the old landmark is what the people say. You know, and, and a lot of times um, older, older, the older generations will say that things are not like they once was because we're not doing what we did. But you got to be progressive. You got to be progressive. I mean, we can't stay back there now. If some things that we did back then, we were doing now, we, we would be just really more messed up than we are. But now things like saying thank you, that never goes out of style. Things like having good manners, that never goes out of style in this. Uh, believe me, that take you longer, that'll take you farther a lot of times than all the education in the world. It really will. And so, you know, once you get there, if you don't know how to act, you can't stay there. So, it, it, you know, but some things we need to leave behind. We do. Need to leave it behind and keep it moving. Need to leave it behind and keep it moving. And so uh, God's, God's going to give them what they want. He says, uh, ye shall not eat one day, nor two days nor five days, neither 10 days, nor 20 days, but even a whole month until it come out of your nostrils and it be loathsome unto you because that you have despised the Lord, which is among you and have wept before him saying, why came we forth out of Egypt? You crying with a loaf of bread under your arm. You got it good. You, you can't see the forest for the trees. And God has blessed you, but no, you want to go back. And Moses said, the people among who I am are 600,000 footmen. And thou hast said, I will give them flesh that they may eat a whole month. Shall the flocks and the herds be slain for them to suffice them? Or shall all the fish of the sea be gathered together for them to suffice them? Then Moses couldn't see it. Moses couldn't see how God was going to feed all of them uh, with enough meat. And so, you know, as um, when, when, when he asked about the livestock, that he couldn't do that because they needed that. They needed the, the herd. They needed the livestock. And so uh, here with the 70 elders, the Lord helped him to solve that problem about how to pastor that many people. And so... Um, he uh, had him to go out and select those 70 elders to assist him with the spiritual oversight of the camp. And if you recall, back in Exodus 18, he had already had leaders to help him settle personal disputes. Because with people of that magnitude, you're going to have some personal battles, personal issues, and you're going to have some spiritual battle and some spiritual issues. So God is so awesome. And God just already had the plan for that. Or here you get these people to help you settle the personal stuff. Get these people to help you with the spiritual things. And so the second problem God helped Moses to solve had to do with finding enough meat. Well, God already had that. God already had that uh, already uh, planned. And so um, in Numbers 11... And in chapter number, I'm sorry, number 11 and verse 31. And there went forth a wind from the land and brought quails from the sea and let them fall by the camp as it were a day's journey on this side. And as it were a day's journey on the other side, round about the camp, and as it were two cubits high upon the face of the earth. And the people stood up all that day and all that night and all the next, and they gathered the quails. He that gathered least gathered ten homers, and they spread them all abroad for themselves round about the camp. And while the flesh was yet between their teeth, ere it was chewed, the wrath of the Lord was kindled against the people, and the Lord smote the people with a very great plague. And he called the name of that place Kibroth Hatava, 
because there they buried the people that lusted. Everybody say, stay out of Egypt. Stay out of Egypt. Stay out of Egypt. Have the presence of mind to be where you are. Have the presence of the mind to enjoy the moment. Because as I said earlier, when I first got up here, y'all, time is, time is just moving. And our life is so fleeting. We can spend our time just, you know, while moaning away about, oh, I wish. I wish. And by the time you, you keep wishing, wishing, months have gone by. Years have gone by. And you're looking and you're trying to, where did the time go? Where did the time go? And again, I say, that's why whatever it is you have in your mind, if it's opening your own business, if it's starting your own business, if it's going back to school to finish your education, if it's whatever it is, it's time to do it. It's time to do it. Stop waiting on someone else to do it. If they can do it, you can do it too. It took me a minute to figure that out. I don't know, when I was trying to go, you know, I always wanted my master's degree. All my friends had a master's. I wanted one, too. And, you know, not for any particular reason. I just wanted one because they had one. But I was thinking, I can't do it. I'm not intelligent enough. But then I started looking around at all the people that had them. <laughs> I'm like, hold it. Wait a minute. If they can do it, I can do it, too. No, no, they don't. Uh, I got just as much sense as they got. And so, y'all, I'm telling you, whatever it is, y'all, do it. Time is moving on. Time is moving on. We can't afford to waste any more time. We cannot but, afford to. Uh, Lady so, Deborah, what I found was a lot of that has to do also with the people that you associate with. Yes. It, it really does. If you want to win, you have to get with winners. That's true. That's true. That, that's a good example. You do. That is. And so uh, now we come to a point where uh, problems have a way of coming in clusters. Do y'all really, do you know? <laughs> I'm looking at Arthur, like my car. <laughs> Just have a way of coming in clusters. It's like if one thing, time one thing happens, it's just like, get ready. You just start looking because you know something else is getting ready to happen. And it comes in clusters because the devil is busy. The devil's always on his job. He's always on his job. He's never just sitting still, waiting on you. He's always on his job. If he's not working with you, he's working with somebody else, somebody else, or somebody else. But he's always on his job. He is alive and busy. And so just about the time the Lord helps you with one crisis, another one comes up. And here is nothing like having a family crisis, is there? Nothing like having a family crisis. That just takes me down to my knees. Because I love my family. I really do. I love, uh, you know, my immediate family. I love the, the, my, my siblings. I, I just love my family. And so, you know, something that can really mess me up is when things are all awry uh, with my family. Well, Moses had family traveling with him, Miriam and Aaron. And so as we began chapter 12, we see that there is uh, some family rebellion going on. So when you look at Miriam and Aaron, they were a team along with Moses. They had, uh, they had a part in the ministry that Moses had for the people of Israel. So everybody knew that Moses and Aaron, Aaron and Miriam were God's chosen servants, but Moses was the leader. That's another point, y'all. So it can only be one leader. It's only one leader. Not that we're all, we're all leaders, but at a particular juncture or whatever it is, there's a person to lead. It's a person that's been appointed to lead. And you know, your pastor tell you all the time, you know, okay, that's Lady Deborah. She's not Pastor Deborah. Okay? And you know, he, has, he, he tells me that every now and then. You just remember who the past is, like I don't know. But, you know, but you, you have to get that straight, and you have, to, you have to realize that there is one person that's been appointed to lead. Because when you have everybody wanting to lead, you have confusion, trouble, a lot of trouble. And you, know, you can all go back to your home, just go back to your house. 
Everybody up in there, you know, there's one leader. There's one head. Let me say it like that. There's one head. And then everything else falls under the head. What happens is when you have more than one, you don't have a leader. Because you've got differing, when you're going in two different ways, sooner or later, you've got to uh, come to a place, mother minute, where you're going one way. Whether it's right or wrong, this is the way that we're going. But now the Bible says that there's safety in a multitude of counselors. And I was up under a leader who would not take counseling. And when you, you have to have counseling. Because everything's not going to come to your mind, your heart. You don't have uh, experience that other people have. And they can bring their experience to the table and help you to lead. But when it's all said and done, there's one person that makes the decision. But he should not just make that decision based upon himself. That, that should be based upon the, the counseling of the body. Yes, yes. Thank and, you. And certainly... Um, now I'm, I'm totally against this stuff by what they talking about some co-pastor Deborah and co-pastor Vanda and they co you know I, I, first thing is I don't think God never called a woman to pastor no way and, and the reason is because I don't think God ever put a woman over a man but that, that's just my understanding of the Bible but if that woman is who God gave you to put by your side and sleeping with you every night and, 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 and in there laboring with you and, and with you when everybody else done turned away, they right there with you. You can't hear her? You in trouble. That's what, that's what it is. You in trouble. You listen to everybody else in the church. You listen to everybody else on the street, but you won't listen to that one that God put right by everybody you said. You in trouble. You're going to pay for it too. Amen. Amen. Okay, and so the rebellion starts. In chapter 12, verse 1, it says, And Miriam and Aaron spake against Moses because of the Ethiopian woman whom he had married, for he had married an Ethiopian woman. Now, this, I, this is just a smokescreen for what was really going on. They weren't concerned about who he had married. It really wasn't about that. They were concerned that they weren't getting the, the recognition that he was getting. <laughs> they felt like, well... Like, I, we're just as smart as he is. And you don't have to be the only one to lead. So, as I said, she didn't begin her assault by accusing him uh, of taking over, but by talking about his wife, just a way to get in. But when she got in, she started talking about what was really on her mind. Because as far as God was concerned, whoever he married was all right, as long as it wasn't one of the women of that land, the Canaanites. And Lady Deborah, the funny thing about it is, you know, and my my only problem is self. My problem ain't y'all, it ain't, you know, white folks, nothing. My problem is self. The funny thing about it is what they're trying to get, which is recognition, is that God gave that to Aaron without Aaron even asking. Remember when he called Moses and he told Moses to speak, and Moses said, Well, God, you know, I'm slow of speech and I stutter and whatever. And God said, That's okay, I'm just tired of fooling with you. Uh, meet your brother Aaron. He's on his way, and I'm going to let Aaron. Aaron is going to speak. Well, God gave Aaron a place. Not It didn't have anything. You don't have to fight. You don't have to pull nobody down. You don't have to seek this recognition. Whatever God's going to do through you, he's going to do it through you. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And verse 2, it says, And they said, Have the Lord indeed spoken only by Moses? Have he not spoken also by us? And the Lord heard it. Now, the man Moses was very meek. It had to be, y'all. For them to have shown out. Now, the, the, well, I'm talking about the whole multitude now. For them to have shown out the way that they showed out. Good, good. He was Hebrew or not black because he'd have cussed all of them. <laughs> and then now for his family, for his family to rise up against him. But I tell you. Family, family. Yeah. Brother June, your family. <laughs> family is something else. When I tell you they'll take you there, won't they? Can I get a witness? Can I get a witness? Your family will take you there. And sometimes they do it just to see if you'll go there. Sometimes they do it just to see if you'll go there. 
Uh, now the man Moses was very meek above all the men which were upon the face of the earth. And the Lord spake suddenly unto Moses and unto Aaron and unto Miriam, Come out ye thee unto the tabernacle of the congregation. Come out ye three unto the tabernacle of the congregation. And they three came out. And the Lord came down in the pillar of the cloud and stood in the door of the tabernacle and called Aaron and Miriam, and they both came forth. And he said, Hear now my words. If there be a prophet among you, I, the Lord, will make myself known unto him in a vision and will speak unto him in a dream. My servant Moses is not so, who is faithful in all mine house. With him will I speak mouth to mouth, even apparently and not in dark speeches. And the similitude of the Lord shall he behold. Wherefore then were ye not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? And the anger of the Lord was kindled against them, and he departed. And the cloud departed from off the tabernacle, and behold, Miriam became leprous, white as snow. And that's why it's kind of evident that she was the one to lead the uh, rebellion, because the Lord first, when he spoke, uh, that was feminine when he spoke. He spoke directly to her about what had happened. And then when he uh, judged them, it was Miriam that ended up with leprosy. And for her to end up with leprosy was an embarrassment. It was an embarrassment because, as I said earlier, the whole camp knew that they were really kind of like a team. Moses was a leader, but they were a team. And so the whole camp knew that she had spoken against Moses. So now you got leprosy. So now what happens when you have leprosy? You get put out. So now you out. Everybody know. You out there because of something you did. You out there because you spoke against God's chosen one. And so... Um, in questioning Moses' authority and God's will, Miriam and Moses, uh, Miriam and Aaron, rather, were acting just like the people of Israel. And then, you know, they're acting just like, and self will make you do some foolish things, won't it? Well, the thing about self is you think you're right, and you think you're justified in what you're doing. Everybody can see it but you. And sometimes I just think you can see it. But you just don't want to. You just don't want to let it go. Like Deborah, that's the reason I think that it's, it's just real important that not everything but most things that come to your mind, you need to have somebody that you discuss it with. Because what I found out is that people that's not even doing right are good themselves. They still can help you. Yes, they can. They might not do it themselves, but they can tell you. Yeah, I believe you'll that. listen. I believe that. And we're going to end on that note and pick up here next Sunday. Give the Lord a hand. Praise everybody. <laughs>